Hello Rat Bags, it's Jade. Welcome back to a survival show. Yes, I know, I've not done one for weeks. Where have I been? Well, you know, I have actually been enjoying myself play Assassin's Creed Animal with Phoenix Rising and it's been nice to do something different than just survival. But as I told you guys, survival will always be part, the main part of the channel anyway, unless there's a big game I'm really interested in. So we are back today. If you don't know, I usually do this once a week, but before that I was doing one, two, three a week sometimes. And it all just depends on what kind of news is out there, but I am going to aim to do short videos with more distinct stuff and make it sure that I'm doing it more often. Hopefully that will keep you guys a bit happier when I am off dilly-dallying in other games. Anywho, what we're talking about today, well, we're going to be going over some of the big stuff with the Game Awards. Coming up in just a couple of days, are we going to see the announcement for Arc 2? I've got a special video lined up for this, but I do want to give a brief heads up about what to expect and get your opinion on it so far. We're just going to go over the Conan Exiles news. What's going on with the Xbox version of the game? Why are they finding it so hard to get the game in a stable position? And what are the chances and likelihood of seeing Sipta arrive on console anytime soon? The Long Dark had a massive update yesterday, it's their survival update for December, a bunch of new content, and new ways to play, and of course it does mean that we're not going to be getting an episode 4, this time it will be next year that's coming out, but it's worth checking out some of the new stuff that you're going to be experiencing in the cold chilly survival game. Drake Hollow, a game that I really liked and enjoyed, they've got an update today, and it's actually pretty decent, it's got some decent stuff in it, adding more ways to play and pretty much fleshing out the game even more. And just a little bit of a follow up on yesterday's news about Rust not appearing on console until next year. It's been officially delayed by the makers of the game. But I want to clear a few things up because Gary Newman replied to someone about who or what is in charge of the pork jobs and it will give us some info about how things are going to go in the future. When are we going to see updates to the game? Is it going to be the same time as PC? So it's been a while, but it's all here. Let's go. It's the survival show. So the last couple of weeks, Wildcard have been hyping up a little bit that they've got a big announcement at the Game Awards. Obviously happening in a couple of days. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be streaming the whole Game Awards. There's a bunch of stuff I'm looking forward to seeing the reveals. So come and check us out when we live stream. Me and my rat bags will be talking, discussing stuff in between waiting for the game trailers and announcements to drop. It starts at 11.30 or midnight UK time. So a bit of a late one for us. I'll bring the coffee, you bring the biscuits. So yes, their likelihood is we're going to see some sort of teaser for Arc 2. If anyone's expecting some sort of big trailer or loads of info, forget it. It will just be something to hype up. Imagine maybe a dinosaur roar above a logo of Arc 2 or just simply some blinking eyes of a dinosaur. That's what I'm going to guess. Over the years, I've covered every interview going talking about the sequels to Art Survival Evolved. It's a well-known fact they've said they're not going to stop working on Ark. And in fact, Ark 2 was much more on the cards before they realised they could eke out even more out of DLC. Originally, Extinction was meant to be the last DLC, but it sold so well, even better than Aberration and Scorched Earth, the developers decided to go ahead and work on Genesis. Up until that point, they really were thinking of leaving it a while and then starting up Arc 2. But add to that, they did have problems with Atlas. It kind of sunk, it didn't perform as well as they wanted to, and so it did mean they needed to generate some more funds, and that's why we got the Genesis Season Pass. Last count that I said a few months ago reported on, Arc has over 18 million players across all platforms. I'm sure that's grown in that time, so you can well imagine there's more people playing Arc than ever before even if I'm not really playing it at the moment because I have just needed a bit of a break. But going back to this interview in March, they've said that they would look at stuff. They don't want to do MTX, apart from them dino skins that don't actually work for anyone. They've actually not worked for about a year, but no one seems to give a shit. But let's get to the real stuff. What about Arc 2? Well, in this interview from March, it goes on in detail about why they did push back Arc 2 to focus on creating Genesis. And in the background, they have been working on Arc Survival Evolved 2. This is why it's taken so long for Genesis Part 2 to come out, why it's received a three month delay. But according to Jesse, Arc 2 will be relatively linear plot in terms of storyline while still giving gamers the freedom. You're still going to have an open world experience just like Arc 1. With Arc 2 we need to give gamers something new that they don't get from Arc. We still don't know what it is, we are not ready to talk about it, but we want to get rid of the framework of Arc. Now that's a pretty interesting statement. The framework of Arc is really explore, tame and conquer. So mixing up or changing that would say to me that maybe the big focus won't be on taming as much in the future, or certainly not the length or the time it takes to tame, or possibly even the conquering aspect of it may be reduced. 
Again, that's just hearsay. That's what I'm kind of reading between the lines. But I can't really think of any other ways they're going to get rid of the framework because that, to me, is that framework. But he goes on to say we will come up with an interesting idea about the next step after ARC or the next step for the survival category. We don't want to release ARC 2 until we address these issues and let people see the clear difference between ARC 1 and ARC 2 probably within a few years then we will see. So yes, the likelihood is we will get a teaser for ARC 2. Is it going to be coming out at any point next year? I maybe doubt it. I think it will be 2022 before we actually see it. Or at the very end of 2021, we may start to see some sort of early access or beta. I for one would be pretty excited about ARC 2. I've long said that the original game has just become too big, too bloated and too full of bugs. Anyway, I'm going to go into that in a bit more detail, but that's what to expect. I will give a video on the Thursday giving more details about the stuff over the years, what they've said about ARC 2 and what we could maybe expect. Big shout out to Ross Clark, a pal of mine. We've done some content together in the past and we've recently done some Dark Souls. Now he's the one that's been really shouting out that there's going to be ARC 2 announcement on the Game Awards. And if you want someone that does more ARC news more regularly than me and actually does good ARC content, actually plays the game much more regularly as well, doesn't load up their videos with five ads in 10 minutes or give you too much loaded clickbait, then definitely go and check him out. I highly recommend him if you want some proper ARC news much more regularly. Don't feed clickbaiters. Go and find actual proper content creators. Links for his channel will be in the comment section down below. Hopefully we're going to be talking about it. You'll be joining me on Thursday night as we discuss what's going to happen and hopefully see the reaction to some sort of tease for it. Okay, moving on to Conan Exiles. What's going on with this game? It's over a week ago that Scott Jr., their new project director, updated another letter. This is probably the third one they've done in recent weeks or months, talking about the state of the Xbox game. Conan Exiles has had massive issues since August. Crashing, lots of data being wiped, save data and worlds gone. Now, weeks ago, they said they were working on it and they was getting more people involved, getting more engineers on the case. As it turns out, though, it looks like that was kind of baloney. Well, they did have good intentions, but it's only recently they finally found, managed to find another partner to help them. It looks like they've gone to a UK-based port company to try and get them to dis do stuff more. Now, they have been working with these guys a few months. I think it was more so maybe planning stuff out for the future, possibly like June or maybe the SIPTA DLC. But it looks like they've got them involved a bit more in the current console versions. So pretty much they say here they've been getting external partners setting up, signing contracts, getting access to builds and setting up development environment. It takes up a bit of time and then it's followed by an even longer period of time while they get into the project, learn how everything is set up. He did stress that the other members of the team, the ones that actually work for Funcom directly, they're going to be working on GPU and memory optimizations for the game as well, so that you don't receive that out of memory crash or general crashes. They're still working on the dashboard issue and hope to have a breakthrough soon with all the added help. This will not be happening anytime soon. They've only literally just set this up last week. It's going to take weeks and weeks for any sort of progress to be made. I really don't expect a fix for Funcom and Conan Exiles on Xbox until after Christmas. What I found really troubling with this post was that they started talking about updates for Conan Exiles though, which is definitely a little bit more music to some people's ears, particularly for next gen. Again, it's something I criticized a good few months ago when they revealed Sipta, they stressed that they weren't working on any next gen updates. And who knows, maybe they watched my video where I spoke about it because I said they really should be looking at it. With Art Survival Evolved making a huge update for Xbox and something in the works for the PlayStation as well, it would make sense that a lot of these ongoing live service games would also do something. And Conan Exiles could definitely do with it. I went and tested it on release day of the Xbox Series X and the improvements were marginal. Yes, faster loading times, but that was about it. So I'm all for next gen updates, but I don't think it's the time to start talking about it in a post where you're still saying you haven't got a fix for a problem that's been with the game for three months. There's a lot of comments in here and I did leave one as well saying that they maybe shouldn't be talking about this kind of stuff until they do get the actual current generations a little bit better stability. But either way, it's good to know that eventually Conan Exiles will be receiving some next gen updates that will take full advantage of the hardware if you're lucky enough to own it. And let's just hope it won't be too long. And just a quick update on SIPTA. Judging by the progress that's being made with that, the updates that are coming, I really can't see any form of SIPTA coming to console until maybe March. I kind of hoped that maybe it'd be January or February, Xbox and PlayStation would be lucky enough to get the DLC. 
but it seems like it's way, way not finished. There's so much still to be added to that. And yeah, I would really doubt seeing any type of DLC for Conan Exiles until at least March. And even then, I still think it may be some months later. Hopefully I'll be proved wrong, but yeah, if you're looking forward to the Sip to DLC on console, I would say focus on other games for now and don't get your hopes up for the next three or four months. So some games that do manage to get some updates out. Drake Hollow, great little game. Go around gathering resources, fighting horrible little creatures, all while collecting cute, wonderful little drakes. They've got a brand new update that's come out today, which adds a bunch of modifiers. You can customize the game to make it as hard or as easy as you want. You can make the enemy, enemy difficulty much harder or easier. You can make more items spawn in the world, more weapons spawn in the world, more ammo, and you can increase your budget of exactly how much you can build. It's a great little addition. I love this game. I think it's a great one. Go and check out some of my videos and guides I did on it if you've not heard about it. It's on the Xbox Games Pass still, I do believe, and definitely for sure this will change up and mix it up a little bit for players that wanted more of a challenge. They've also added some new cosmetics, and surprise, none of this is MTX. These are all cosmetics you'll find as you explore the game. Nice holiday stuff going on here. So again, big shout out to Drake Hollow. Doing really good stuff in a few months since they launched, and definitely a game we should get behind, rather than maybe some of these companies that just struggle to even keep their game stable after so many years. They've also got a bunch of fixes as well, and yeah, I'm definitely going to dive into this in the next few weeks when I have some time off. So The Long Dark is like nearly six years old, maybe seven years old at this point, and it's still updating with content. Obviously, it's still got episodic content to release, and the fourth episode was delayed until next year due to the ongoing situation with COVID. In the meantime, though, they have been able to work on more survival content, and the latest update, Hidden Prospect, adds a new region to go and explore. This is out available for everyone on Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, Switch, and PC. Ash Canyon is the new area. You're also going to have two new items, a technical backup, as well as crampons, which pretty much allow you to walk over ice. They've also added the dark walker up mode, which was part of a Halloween thing they've done for a couple years, but they've now made it permanent because so many people really enjoyed it. Pretty much you have to just run around the whole map at night time, avoiding a dark entity. If it gets too close to you, it's game over. The only way you can get rid of him is by writing special runes in and around the world and obviously getting out of the area. They've also added changes to it as well so you can make the game even harder by playing it at night time constantly and a bunch of other stuff. So again, good stuff, lots of fixes and it's good to see that it is coming to the Switch at the same time as originally they had hoped to get some content out for Halloween but the Switch had massive delays and they ended up cancelling it altogether. So now at least everyone who bought it on Switch will be able to get take part in the Halloween content too. So yesterday's announcement that Rust won't be coming in 2020 after all, and it will be at some point next year, was probably not too much of a surprise. We're in December, unless they was going to stealth drop it, I think it was taken. It may wouldn't come until next year. But a lot of you guys have been wondering exactly how it's going to work with updates and who's actually in charge. Well, Face Punch is nothing to do with the actual pull, other than maybe some advice, the port job and ongoing support for it is going to be done by Double Eleven. Gary, the creator of Rust and Gary's mod, obviously, confirmed this in a post on Instagram. Just replying to someone that asked, who's going to be in charge of updates and new skins? Is it going to be Face Punch? And he said, Double Eleven is almost totally in charge of the port. And I can't see that changing. There are some instances where some games have taken control back of a game once the port job's done. Subnautica and Unknown Worlds, they took their port job back once they'd had it done on the PlayStation 4. And now they're getting more help with another port company to do the, the Switch version. Art Survival Evolved had big huge help from Abstraction. They were the ones that made the PlayStation 4 port and took over console duties as well as the Switch. But again, as soon as the Switch version was done, they took back control of that and they've been doing it themselves by outsourcing it to smaller companies that no one's really heard of. So it's kind of good news to see that Double Eleven are going to be in charge. What this does mean is though, updates for PC, they're going to be ahead of console. Even if we get to the point that console has got all the features of PC right now, you can expect because Rust gets updated monthly, that we won't see them kind of content updates. We still might see monthly ones, but it's going to be a good amount of time behind PC. I really can't see them getting it out at exactly the same time. At best, I think it will be the next month we will see the console versions of these stuff come out. In the past, ARK have shown that they can sometimes do it within a week or two weeks occasionally. There have been instances where they've got content out, 
but that's usually reserved for things like DLC, and sometimes they obviously delay it for months on end. Back in early access though, when Abstraction were in charge, they would get updates relatively only a week or two after. But I think with Face Punch, with Rust and Double Eleven also being in charge of Minecraft Dungeons, I don't think they're going to necessarily be pushing that much of a rush to get these updates out. So you can expect when we get monthly updates from Rust, that content won't be appearing on consoles until at least another 3 or 4 weeks afterwards. It also means that skins and stuff like that, that'll all be made and done by Double Eleven. I also think this puts to bed any hope that anyone had of crossplay. I don't really see why we need crossplay with PC players. If Xbox maybe has it with PlayStation, I think that would be a good one, but there's no even confirmation of that yet. But obviously, because it is the port team doing the work and the monthly updates are kind of hard to manage, I really can't see PC ever being able to be mixed with Xbox and PlayStation. And I think a lot of people will be pleased with that. They won't have to worry about aimbot and stuff like that. It's pretty bad news about Rust not appearing. And it is kind of a bit rubbish that they've spent a whole year not really giving any info and then only just to tell us that actually it's going to be delayed. We all know the troubles and the problems with COVID has affected some games companies, but for sure both of these companies are based in the UK. I do feel like they could have maybe let us know a few things a little bit earlier. As I said, I do expect the game maybe to release between January and maybe March next year, obviously in just the beta form. We know it's playable, Gary's been playing it on his Xbox, but clearly there is much needed work on it. But yeah, just a little bit of a follow up, so what can you expect with development of the game? Rust is going to blow so many of the survival games out of the water. I predict huge things for Rust on console. It will take away a lot of players from Ark and Conan, even though they have quite very different games. Definitely for the PvP aspect anyway. And there we go guys, I am hopefully looking forward to 140k subscribers by the end of this year. That's going to be pretty big for me. It's been a fantastic year, the best year ever, all while increasing how many games I play, what different types of games I play. Going forward, this is going to be it from now on. I will carry on doing survival stuff, and there will be times where I'll be concentrating on nothing but survival games. In the early part of the year, we're going to be seeing Subnautica, Pray for the Gods, as well as Breath Edge all coming to Xbox PlayStation. So I'm going to be covering all them games very soon. I'm starting my Let's Plays of them all and members on YouTube will be able to see them videos very soon. The rest of this year I'm going to be doing some list videos talking about the best survival games this year, what to expect next year as well as maybe some other games that I'm hyped and excited for. I've enjoyed Immortals Phoenix Rising but you guys really aren't watching it much and I'm not getting much traction just from people looking up guides either. And Assassin's Creed, I'm still enjoying that, but I'm probably going to start streaming it now until I get to the end, which I still haven't managed to complete. But some of the videos I did for it were the biggest I've had in months, so it's been successful. But as I said, survival news will be a bit more regular in the next few weeks, although I will be taking some time off over Christmas and January. So yeah, a little update from me. Until next time, I will see you lot on Thursday when we see the big reveals for lots of games and hopefully some more news about Art Survival Vol 2. Until then, laters.